It looks like Yapsil's now going to commit that smoke. So yep, this is like fight on top lane and it ended up just being nothing, but they're they're looking towards mid now. Yapsaw needs to get the silence off and he's going to be able to. Mid one already used his orb. He'll come back out of this. You got the laser damage and there it is. Night Stalk will actually be the one to claim the last hit and the first blood. Yeah, that's why we both kind of talked about it. It looked like the first smoke TP gank was gonna to go towards the mid lane, but a couple of bottle charges to Ohio when he first arrived. And now it looks like they're going to try and kill off the clinks. They're going to try and hunt down Era. Cinderin, however, oh, he already blows it up, and Cinderin takes it for the team. Dukes. He'll get a Gale off, so mid one and Mushi can instantly TP out. You got Chrono up! You're going to catch out too! And this is the damage they can just pump into the middle of the Chrono. Puck will go down. Mushi, he doesn't have Infest, but he'll have the Surge Wave thanks to Ohio. Who may have just sacrificed himself to save the life stealer? Dyer's top tower. But it's kind of funny attack. when Ohio is still like the highest CS or over on Fnatic at the moment. He'll surge up through the tree line, try and duke it out as far as he possibly can. The leap forward from Keizu. Have they got more control? Yep, there she is. Ohio will drop. So two cores dead for Fnatic and no diggity. They're actually off to quite a decent start here in game one. Point for an easy way to defend and push out these lanes. Boy. Venomancer teamfight is also something you have to really start respecting. And you're in. Well, yep. seen yep. this one before. Well, thank, thanks for your life, thanks for your service, and uh, goodbye, Syndrome. DJ is also going to TP himself off top lane after uh, Yapsaw. Also, here it just legs it. I do have Mushi on bottom lane, however. He's looping and round. The Observe Ward scouts out. Syndrome's moving in. Ohio going to back and back. Mushi starts his attack with the open wounds. Koipa losing too much life, and Syndrum body blocks it up. So Koipa's got the space. The infest damage, however, is able to spill up to the Tinker. And now Mushi locked inside the Chronosphere. Syndrome commits an over, and Yapsaw comes to help out. A quick silence. You've still got that armor available for Mushi. You drop down low, he's ticking now. He's actually hoping, what, the Centaurs will save him? That ain't gonna happen. Yapsaw runs through and they will find the revenge kill. And they may even get more. Ohio, also not free. Hero, too much damage. And that's a double kill for a Night Stalker, who's now three kills on the board. Out of the mid lane, perhaps a initiation on Ohio. No, Void, he'll jump in. TP support on the way. One and two. The uh, Jakira is going to be the first one to the front line. But now an Era also arrives. Dream Call catches out three. Kaze is going to start his TP out. Yapso will die. An Era, a very quick zoom out from DJ. Ensures they can get some revenge. At the same time, you lost Mushi up on top lane to Koipfer. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Mushi, but the Tinker. He was left solo behind. Solo kill, it looks like. Yeah, he was left behind. He was TPing his TP at Roche. They've taken two or three Roches almost always without really any much, without much of a fight, without any contest coming out of Fnatic. Cinderin is your sacrificial ward. Moving between the tier one and tier two towns. Actually, it looks like he broke his, Ooh. yeah, he broke his invis down both of these obs wall, but it's the mid lane fight which is now going to erupt. DJ, the first one to get caught out. Gale, he can't get his doom off because he's still actually locked inside the silence. There's an over that did the work, but now Mushi, he'll arrive. Simran will go down, but he's already done his job for the team. The question is, can the respawning era have more to work with? They've got the sentries down, so he can't walk outside with the skeleton. Walk for Keizu, he'll arrive for the double chrono, and era's not caught into it, so he can turn around, doing the damage into Mushi. He'll find the kill, then 3-4-3. Three, doesn't stand a chance. Mid one's hunting on the back lines, trying to chase down Koit, but with a quick TP out, there's no stuns available. So Fnatic will lose four heroes. And all they managed to claim was the already beaten and battered Cinderin. Yeah, they got it. Actually, it looks like Yamsaw's hunting somebody if he can catch up to him. You are during nighttime, so he does have that, that quick advantage with the Ops plan down by 3 4 3. Yapsaw didn't see that, but with the Void on the 3-4-3, rotation's coming over. Do you want to really go in this deep? Keizu still waiting, the Yule set from mid-1. We'll keep Keizu out of this fight, but 3-4-3, he's still going to drop, and now you're Chronosphere, catching up the Darkseer, who tried to help by throwing out the wall, but he may just lose his own life for it. Cinder is there to help out. Yep, you can't search yourself away when the Diffusal Blade is up. You pick up the Puck, the Darkseer, and the Jakiro, and Doom was burnt. They tried to kill off Era. Radiant's middle tower that is was under attack. Era at this stage. They get 12k experience, about 8.5 to 9k worth of uh, net worth. And Fnatic's way back in is what they're doing now. They're smoking out, they're oh, looking Cinderin. for kills and pick off. Not again. Not again. This is this, this is happened great. before. <laughs> this is what Diggity wants. No, no, oh, he, had oh, okay, <laughs> he had the gem. He had the gem, he only Other just got that. the gem. 
okay. the second you start, the second you start demon is up, looking to get aggressive. But boy, well, the observer ward sees Yamsaw. They know Yamsaw went up there. In yeah. fact, because uh, they got really good vision around oh, here. Pop the blade mount too. Yeah, that's uh, maybe a little bit earlier. <laughs> Trying to use it to be a little bit safer on his farm, and now they initiate in. Mushi won't really care anyway, because he will. He just rages up. And Nightmare Trigger is a little bit too late as well. It's a fortunate time to use Blade Mount Farm Neutral. Everywhere around the pit, so getting in close is really difficult. Unless the Dark Sea does exactly what he did. Like, it's, it's an aggressive surge over on mid one, so we can move forward. Bought enough time. It's five seconds till Chrono is back off cooldown. And now Fnatic try and push the bottom lane. They're grouped up really nicely for Keizu. There's two of them there. They'll gale over from top of the Jakira. The Ice Crush is well on target. The back wall, however, that'll do some work. The Chrono Spear will finally drop down, but it's Keizu basically by himself until Koifa moves forward. Lend that extra Dagon damage. Era taking out the fight for a little bit thanks to the Doom. But it's Keizu time walking himself out. Gets the kill over on the Darkseer, and they can finally recover that gem that was lost before. Quickly does a lot of damage. Keizu's finding Rishi. great Chronos in these team fights. I had no stuns. You can see the mid lane, you can see parts of your jungle in the top river. And, uh, and now you can see, well, now you can see, um, how No Diggity have a bigger side advantage again. They agon have such a fresh overall the Night Stalker, and No Diggity, they try and come in and fight. Yep. They look towards the top lane, they get a glimpse of Mushi, yep, now they see a glimpse of Mushi. Ira doesn't have long left over, actually, he doesn't actually have anything. On the death pack, it doesn't really matter when you get a, a, a corner like that. Mushi's already going to go down. Your Yule's over a mid one, but then the, the next target's just going to be DJ. Doom or not, Hero will survive it. You got his BKB off at 3 4 3, will also not get out. Four heroes lost. Faceless Void taking two of them. And no DD, they are, they are poised to win this third, third game and take the first series. It just shows how reliant they are on the lifestyle to do damage. No diggity, just content to one man chrono him to start the fight and take him out. And there's no real good counterplay to the chronosphere. You can throw the ice path, perhaps Radiant's catch the void, but it's not just the void doing attack. damage, it's the tinker and the clinks from the outside who can't really be dealt with. And Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Now, without an age, they don't even need an Aegis, they're going to be threatening high ground here, possibly yep. forcing some buybacks. Well, that'll be the ideal scenario if you're, uh, if you know diggity. But the only one you've got right now is Life Stealer. They just keep trying to beat the living crap out of that tier 3 tower. What Jira is able to do from range. TP's coming to the front lines. That's the Doom Bringer. Jira's last arrow. Doesn't miss uphill and hits perfectly to the tower and coin for 343. He didn't die from that. But the rocket is also not enough damage, I don't believe. Yeah. Yep. His one charge just gave him just enough life straight after that, like, no other basic attack could kill him. And setting up in Roshan. <laughs> Just prepping. Got like, got like what's everywhere. Stuff ready too. <laughs> hey, it's like the only ward you can put in Roshan, right? Step mods too. Yeah, you can drop mass up mods. You are right. Second ward. Yeah. No ward. You can but apart, apart, from, apart from those three yeah. wards, the only wards... <laughs> I think the better example is the only wards you can't, you can't drop are Observer and Sentry wards. Oh, era. They scouted him oh, out thanks to the Sentry jam, ward that was there. But Diggity aren't in position to fight straight away. And thanks to the Observer ward that's up on the hillside, at least they can know where the attack's coming. May not matter when Era initiates very, very aggressively up through the mid. Mushi charging out, trying to fight him. But it's Keizu, a three-man chrono. The wing was clipped by 343. Can they get a Dark Thief back wall? Well, they can, but everyone's already hit by the Nova. Even with the Gale on DJ, him getting close enough to get a, a, a Doom off. Chances are fairly low for now. Cinderin's already TPing away to safety. He was low enough, but he kind of had to do that. Mushi, the nukes are real. Poison will come in again, and the damage from Era, you just blink over any of the control, the doom will happen again, but no puck, no live steal off. Because their buybacks are currently on cooldown for now. This will be a mid racks or a bottom tier 3 tower. Potentially both. So no buybacks on the two main cores of Fnatic. Must be just oh. something Assassinate and Koikva. No mercy Radiant's coming out from the Tinker Specialist. Why Grand Mercy? This is Wildcat Elimination. 
on day one we eliminate two teams and right now it looks like it's going to be diggity going up against newbie in that winner's bracket final then fanatic i think a lot of people expect them to have a good performance here especially up against no diggity but now and they're first showing with mushi back in the roster on the carry position they made some adjustments and this is an unfortunate start for them because this wild card is really do or die for them. If they don't make it out today, they're done for. Yep, they get to sit, watch, and learn. And wait for Manila, I guess. Yeah, but that would be pretty much it. Coin fast as e played. <laughs> he actually ends up doing it. They just want to end this game. They want to take the victory. Fnatic will have one last chance. They'll jump forward. There's a good smoke. Wait for Keizu, however. There's your Chrono Spear. Catching out DJ as well as 343. DJ still isolated. He doesn't have Doom available to kill off the Tinker, but at this point, money is going to win you the game. You just buy back. BT Ford. The Doom will buy back as well. Instantly time locked up. Mushi is just getting completely out of control. And there it is. Good game. Well played. No diggity. Well, 2 1 Fnatic here in our first series on the mainstream. I mean, it, it really looked and felt like after that game one, like we could just be in for a quick 2-0, but boy did No Diggity show some serious composure playing at their first LAN event as a team. They bounce back two great drafts in a row coming out from Cinderin and I mean, no diggities. They're here to play some good Dota. Yeah, and that was absolutely wonderful Dota. Of course, the people who know